Welcome to lecture 10, section 2.3, the inverse of a matrix. We are using the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. The inverse of a matrix. We say that the n by n matrix A is invertible or non-singular if there exists another n by n matrix B such that the product A times B equals B times A and that equals I n where I n is the identity matrix of order n. If this is the case, then we say that B is the multiplicative inverse of A. Once more, or in another words, B is said to be the multiplicative inverse of A if and only if A times B equals B times A and that equals I N. You would need this definition in most of the proofs under the concept inverse of a matrix. I'll come back to this later. Theorem Uniqueness of an inverse matrix. If A is an invertible matrix, then its inverse is unique. And we actually denote that inverse by A raised to the power minus 1. Proof Simple exercise for serious students. But I'll give you hints. Now, since A is invertible, it must have at least one inverse. So, let B be an inverse of A. What does that mean? A times B equals B times A equals I. Now, suppose C is also an inverse of A, another inverse altogether. What does that mean? A times C equals C times A equals I. We now have two equations. So what I want you to do is play with these two equations and arrive at the conclusion that B must be equal to C. And you're done. Example. Find the inverse of the matrix a given as follows. If you are not asked specifically to use the Gauss-Jordan elimination procedure, then you can go directly by definition. To find the inverse of A, we are simply looking for a matrix X such that A times X equals I and x times a equals i. So, a is a 2 by 2 matrix. Therefore, the inverse must also be a 2 by 2 matrix. Entries unknown. If x is the inverse, then a times x must be equal to i. We use our definition of matrix multiplication and we end up with our matrix equals i we use the definition of matrix equality, equate corresponding entries. We end up with two systems of linear equations. We solve this system using our reduced row echelon form. And we end up with x equals negative 3, negative 4, 1, 1. Now, don't be so quick as to say that this matrix must be equal to A inverse. You have to first of all verify that X times A also equals I. So if A times X equals I and X times A equals I, then we can boldly and confidently conclude that the matrix X that we arrived at must be equal to the inverse of A. Is it sinking? 
getting it okay now i did mention god's jordan elimination as a method for arriving at the inverse of a matrix how is this done now let a be a square matrix of size n by n step one we write the n by 2n matrix that consists of the matrix a on the left and the n by n identity matrix on the right in this form a i we have used dotted lines to separate a and i for convenience only you do not have to use any dotted lines this process is called adjoining matrix i to matrix a step two if possible row reduce matrix a to matrix r using elementary row operations on the entire matrix i'm going to go back one step this is what we have a i i'm interested in reducing matrix a to matrix i but I perform those elementary row operations on the entire matrix. So by the time the matrix A reduces to the matrix I, what do you think would have happened to this, our nice matrix I on the right? Well, matrix I gets transformed to A inverse. That's beautiful. Example. Find the inverse of the matrix A. It's a 3 by 3 matrix using the Gauss Jordan elimination procedure. Step 1. We adjoin the identity matrix I to the matrix A to form the matrix AI. This is our A and this is our I. The next step would be to row reduce A if possible to the matrix i and at the same time we would be transforming i to a inverse so we start off the procedure using elementary row operations and fortunately for us in this example we end up on the left hand side with the matrix i and that simply means the matrix on the right negative 2 negative 3 negative 1 negative 3 negative 3 negative 1 negative 2 negative 4 negative 1 is simply the inverse of a beautiful properties of inverse matrices if a is an invertible matrix k is a positive integer c is a scalar that's a real number not equal to zero then a inverse a raised to the power k c times a and a transpose are all invertible and the following are true all these four properties proof simple exercise for serious students hint recall that b equals the inverse of a if and only if a times b equals b times a equals i so if i want to prove that a inverse or inverse equals a what do i really have to prove again I'll let you finish that. Another theorem, the inverse of a product. If A and B are invertible matrices of size N, then AB is also invertible and as a matter of fact, A times B all inverse equals B inverse times A inverse. Proof. Yeah, you guessed correctly simple exercise for serious students hint again b is the inverse of a if and only if 
a times b equals b times a equals i how can you apply that definition here i'll let you figure that out another theorem cancellation properties if c is an invertible matrix i.e c inverse exists then the following properties hold if a c equals b c then i can execute right cancellation and end up with a equals b if c a equals c b i can execute left cancellation and end up with a equals b proof yes once more simple exercise for serious students well the hint here will be maybe a lot better since c is invertible i.e c inverse exists multiply both sides to the right by c inverse then c times c inverse becomes i b times i is just b c times c inverse equals i a times i equals a we end up with a equals b do the same thing multiplying c inverse to the left on both sides a equals b i'll let you do the write up and finally systems of linear equations with unique solutions how does the concept of the inverse of a matrix help us in our fundamental problem in linear algebra solving systems of linear equations we've seen that a given system of linear equations can be written in the form ax equals b where a is the matrix of coefficients x is the matrix of unknowns what we are looking for the variables and b is the matrix of constants on the right hand side of the system of linear equations if a is invertible then i can multiply both sides of this equation from the left by a inverse and a inverse times a would be i i times x is simply the matrix x and on the right hand side i end up with a inverse times b which is a column matrix and that gives me my unique solution for the system of linear equations